everyone, this is Josh with a fun cryptocurrency coding and security tutorial for you today. And for this video, we're going to be talking about the very interesting concept of cryptocurrency address swapping malware. This is a very real attack uh, that has been used to steal uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum users funds out in the wild. And so I thought it would be fun to code up a very simple demo of how this works so that uh, if you're interested in security and development and cryptocurrency, you can learn through code. So first, let's talk about what crypto address swapping malware is, what it does, and how it's used to steal from people. So cryptocurrency addresses are long strings of uh, random numbers. They're very hard to remember. They're hard to type out and use. So in most cases, users of currencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum copy and paste addresses when they want to send money to someone. So whether the intended recipient is uh, their own wallet, so maybe you're transferring from an exchange to a mobile phone or hardware wallet, uh, or you're sending coins to a merchant, you would copy that address, just like you would copy any other data, like a web address or uh, a bit of a text document. And this malware running in the background uh, of the victim system will detect that a cryptocurrency address is in the clipboard or copy paste buffer and replace that with the address of an attacker. So the idea is when you go to copy an address to send coins to your wallet uh, and you uh, paste that address uh, into your wallet software, you won't notice that the address isn't actually the one that you intended. And therefore, you will send coins off to the attacker or the thief instead of who you intended to send the coins to. Now, this is really insidious because, uh, again, these addresses can be long and kind of hard to you know really look at and deal with. And so if you don't double, triple check your addresses, you can send coins off to that attacker. And the other reason that this is a very insidious attack is that cryptocurrency transactions are irreversible. There's no chargeback mechanism like there is uh, with a credit or debit card. So if you uh, paste the attacker address, you don't double check it and realize that something is off, those coins are gone. They belong to the attacker. So how does this actually work? How could we write up a demo of this on our own? You know, real malware is much more sophisticated than what I'm showing here. I'm not a malware expert, uh, but I think this is something that's really cool to show uh, as a software demo and something that we can learn from. So I coded up uh, the original demo in csharp.net, uh, which is a you know popular language. And I also coded up a version of this in Python. So depending on the type of syntax you like or what language that you're learning, uh, you can look at a version of this with either. Um, and I may add additional versions in the future. Um, so let's talk about how to build this. The first thing that we need to do is we need some way to uh, pull the copy paste buffer or the clipboard. This is a OS based construct. So uh, Windows and Mac OS X and Linux all have some version implemented in the operating system uh, of a way to copy data, to cut data, to paste data into different programs. So, you know, maybe you have a text document of a website that you're interested in and you paste that URL into your browser and go visit that website. Uh, C Sharp and Python both have very simple and easy to use libraries for this. So we don't have to do any sort of like system calls or low level OS operations in order for this to work. The next thing that we do is we're going to do this on some regular interval. So, you know, we don't need to be constantly pulling as fast as the uh, CPU will let us, right? Uh, that would just use up a bunch of system resources, it would slow other programs down, and would tip the user off that maybe something is wrong with their system. So I think for something like this, pulling every half second or second may be useful. 
um, you know, a reasonable amount of time that when somebody copies an address, uh, there's time for our attack software to swap it out with our address uh, before they can paste it in somewhere else. And this won't use a lot of CPU cycles. It'll be pretty idle in the background and go hopefully unnoticed. So the next construct that we need is something called a regular expression. These are uh, really useful tools for a bunch of things in programming. And most programming languages that are general purpose uh, have some form of regular expression functionality or library. And what regular expressions are in a nutshell are tools for pattern matching. So you can write a regular expression that checks for uh, text data that meets the format of a phone number, for example, uh, or a uh, name, a first name and a last name with a space in the middle, all sorts of things, email addresses. And we're going to use a regular expression here to check for a string that matches the format of a Bitcoin address. You can also do this for Ethereum or any other cryptocurrency that you're interested uh, in for this demo. So as we pull the clipboard, we don't want to just replace any text data that's in the clipboard with uh, our new Bitcoin address, right? If somebody goes to copy and paste a website URL and all of a sudden they have a Bitcoin address, they're going to be tipped off uh, immediately that something is wrong with their system, that they need to run some sort of scan. We only want to replace a Bitcoin address with our Bitcoin address as the attacker in this demo. So as we pull, we'll use our regular expression to check uh, for a Bitcoin address, and if it matches, we will replace the clipboard data using our uh, system library, uh, whether it's C-sharp or Python or something else, with our attacker address. And therefore, profit if our user doesn't check their addresses. Now, of course, this should go without saying. Um, never steal from people. I mean, that's obviously wrong. And this is just an educational demo. But it's so simple, and it's such a it's simple yet sophisticated attack that has occurred and has stolen money from real people in the real world. So this hits home the idea that if you're a user of cryptocurrency, you should always be double and triple checking your addresses before you send coins. There could be something wrong with your system, like this form of malware, that would cause uh, you to lose your coins. And again, crypto transactions aren't reversible. This is something that can be done, at least in a demo form, in a uh, very small amount of code. So it's a really fun, interesting educational demo that spreads some security education. I would encourage you, if you're new to programming, if you're new to cryptocurrency and you're into computer science, try coding up something like this yourself. See if you can get it to work. Uh, it doesn't take much time. I made both of these in about 30 minutes or less. Um, you know, I am a software engineer by profession, but uh, the amount of code involved here and the libraries involved here uh, are both fairly uh, simple and straightforward. So as always, it's great to spread security awareness, learn about computer science. I hope you found this interesting and thank you for learning something new with me today.